Welcome to the Bethlehem Brother Podcast Mobile Studio Edition, the first of its kind. I'm Glenn, and I'm joined today by none other than the one, the only, Seth Fuller. How's it going, Seth? Uh, it's going, going good, Glenn. Uh, how are you doing tonight? <laughs> doing good, man. It's been so long. We, have we as Bethlehem Brothers, I know Walter, myself, Sam as well, we try to get you on a podcast for forever, and... Now that the podcast studio is mobile, maybe we can get a couple more appearances out of Seth. We'll see here in the upcoming weeks. But um, <laughs> We will see. Yeah, we will see. Um, thanks to a guy named Jacob Ingalls. Um, sure, I'm butchering the crap out of your last name, man. But he donated this equipment, and we are very, very thankful here at Bethlehem Brother for him um, and for donating it. So thanks to him, we have the equipment now, and we have the ability to go mobile, which Bethlehem Brother has not had the ability to do before. So instead of recording always in still water, well, coming to you live from uh, zip code 73107. Uh, all right, Seth. Well, how's your week been? Good? Uh, it's been good, man. It's been pretty busy. Um didn't get a chance to watch the uh, OSU game. Got a chance to watch the OU game, though, so that was pretty fun. Well, tell us just a little bit about yourself. Do you? <laughs> I, I Everyone knows I go to OSU, but do you? Uh, I go to OU. I live in Oklahoma City, and I commute every day. Um, but, but yeah, sorry. I need to put my mouth a little closer to the microphone, a little new for me. Um, but, yeah, man, I've uh, been in school every day, and then uh, spent the last two days up in Stillwater with some friends. So um, it's been a good week uh, all around. So. Well, Seth, it's not been a great week for me. I um, my Cowboys lost this weekend to TCU. Bad had four turnovers in that game, and it was really a bad way to start it out. But first, let's talk about the one thing that I think, no matter who you are, if you live in Oklahoma, you know about this, and you're excited. Carmelo Anthony waived his no-trade clause and decided to go to Oklahoma City to try to win a title this year. What are your initial reactions here, Seth? I'm excited. Um, I remember Sam Presti, like, whenever we first got him uh, with the Oklahoma City Thunder, he was uh, known, and his primary purpose was to build a team. And I think he did just that. And so I'm excited um, right now having uh, this team built around uh, the reigning MVP, Russell Westbrook. So we have now Paul George and another uh, 10-time All-Star with Carmelo Anthony. So um, I'm excited. Uh, a little nervous. I mean, I think just about everybody is um, with all three of their uh, contracts ending after um, this season. So a um, little nervous about that. But all around, I'm excited um, for the season. So what about you? This is one of those things where you got to think about it. You got to go glass half full because you're right. Their contracts do end all at the end of the season. Yeah. Now, so far as to say there's no reason Thunder fans would be up in an uproar and panic that Westbrook would leave. Right. But then again, nothing for certain is known right now. You know, media days have kind of come and gone, and yeah. no real word on what's going to happen there from Westbrook and the and uh, especially we really don't know what happened from Paul George. There was a good thing though that came out today. So Paul George sat down with a um, a writer, and Paul George said, "Wow, Oklahoma City now is a championship built team with the addition of Carmelo Anthony." Hearing a guy say, you know, they got an addition and seeing him post a lot of fit pictures on, you know, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, whatever, and Paul George of how much he's exploring Oklahoma and really fishing it out there and stuff like that. I'm really glad he hasn't picked up noodling because if he lost a finger, that'd be horrible. <laughs> that but for sure. um, the fact that he has really let his presence known about Oklahoma City has been has been awesome. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Um, it's it's good to see um, big superstar players uh, and uh, people like that. Um, to come to Oklahoma City and realize that it's not a bunch of people running around on horses in the middle of downtown, like um, I think a lot of people from around the country believe. Um, it, it's cool. And, I mean, even uh, we lost Dennis Cantor, which stinks. But, uh, you know, he's one of those big guys that was all around social media praising Oklahoma City, the fans, and the community. So um, I think that Paul George definitely has a good personality for us to have. Um, he's been really excited about this season. So it's a good sign. Paul George is awesome. I am incredibly in support of, of Paul George and the fact that he had his first annual, by the way, that was how it was said. It wasn't it wasn't first Bass Classic or whatever. It was first <laughs> annual Bass Classic where um, Russell Westbrook looked less than pleased or excited for this. Uh, Josh Eustace ended okay. up winning it, so props to Josh there. That might be the only thing he wins the whole season for the Thunder, but hey. way to go. Way to be a team player there, Josh. <laughs> yeah. Get that... Uh, Everyone trophy. Billy Don was out there cashing fish too. So that's 
that was really cool. I'm I'm excited for this season. Way more excited than I thought I'd be before. You right. know, I mean, like, I mean, think about it this way. So, you know, I listen to a lot of the Thunderheads podcast, and one of the things they said um, last week um, is that 14 months ago, Kevin Durant left Oklahoma City. Yeah. 14 months later, who thought we'd be going? Oh, let's go to try to take the number two seed. Right. You know, like no, I, I think everyone expected us as a franchise to kind of fold, to just kind of go, okay. Let's see how long, much longer we keep Russ. We know this is a broken system of just having Russ right, right. basically be the MVP of the whole. St- he is the MVP of the league, so he's clearly MVP of the team. Right. But you know, Russ more or less willed his way to a six seed last year for the Thunder. That, right. There's no, definitely. No ifs, ands, or buts about that one. But now it's 14 months later, and KD's gone. And honestly, I feel like we're more able to compete with uh, as a number one seed now than we were with KD. And hear me out on that one. Okay. So. With Kevin Durant, he's the second best player in the entire world, right? Right. That's that's easy to say. But when KD and Russ were off the court, it was a travesty. You had oh, yeah. it was horrible. Now there is not one, not two, but three right, right. all star caliber players who have had all stars, one MVP, one ten time all star as you said in Carmelo. Yeah. One, you know, I forget exactly how many All Star appearances Paul George has had, but he's had a lot of them. He's had a lot, and he's been, you know, dang good. In right, he's games, dang so. good in all of them. <laughs> like, and I'm, I'm so excited. I'm so pumped up for this season. Yeah. It, it, I mean, it's really, really cool. It's like some weird divine presence that someone knew that right. should open up the season against the Knicks. Like somebody out there was going, man, you know what? We heard talks <laughs> about this. Let's do this because that was that's too weird to me. Yeah. Before, when I heard that the Thunder were starting the season against the Knicks, I was going, really? The, I mean, no offense. You know, the Knicks are, good. <laughs> Knicks are a well-known franchise. I'm sure we'll get MV, NBA, you know, a bunch of TV deals and stuff like that. But it, it wasn't like, oh, we're opening up against the Rockets, you know, right, the playoff series all season or whatever. Last season that, like, the Knicks were pretty bad. Pretty poor. Pretty bad. Pretty, pretty poor. Bad. So, <laughs> so for that to be the starting game, but so be cool. But now... It's really cool because you've got Ennis Cantor and, well, right. as much as Dougie Fresh McDermott loved playing in Oklahoma <laughs> City, he's going to be around too. So yeah. that's awesome. And then as as a, a, a as a huge Thunder fan, having three All Star caliber players in Oklahoma City for even even if it's for one season, I I think that helps more than hurts anything. So I think no, I think totally. at the end of the day, at the end of the day, the people who tell me, you know, Paul George is leaving after the season, right? So, you know who else is going to leave eventually? Victor Oladipo and his horrible contract, along with Demontis <laughs> Sabonis. I mean, that's just that's just a fact of yeah. the matter. If it is, Victor Oladipo was a guy who was the sixth man on an Orlando Magic team, and then Demontis Sabonis was an eleventh overall draft pick who had a lot of upside. Okay, Sam Presti turned both of those guys into, you know, he basically traded Serge Ibaka for those guys, right? Magic right. got a, I think the Magic got an okay deal out of that, really. I don't think at the end of the day we're going, wow, the Magic really... It's weird the Magic added another power forward to their already power forward heavy lineup, right, but right. but that, that's beside the point. I don't think the Magic got really get chipped on that one. I think the Pacers really got chipped in this whole deal. They just panicked <laughs> to the last second and traded. Right. And I, it clearly wasn't the last second since trades are still being done this week, as we saw with the Carmelo thing. But having Paul George in Oklahoma City and getting rid of Oladipo and Sabonis is... I would have loved to get his, see us get rid of them no matter what. No, exactly. Like I, I really liked uh, having a buck on the team, and like I, Victor Oladipo is a decent player. Um, I, I, I don't put him in the caliber of, uh, I mean, even like just good players on our team. Like he's, he's a good backup to Russell Westbrook, but he's not going to be a leading point guard. So I'm, I'm fine getting rid of uh, Oladipo. But me too. I think it's something where. As a Thunder fan, at the end of the day, would I rather have Ennis Cantor, Doug McDermott, Victor Oladipo, and DeMontis Sabonis, or would I rather have Carmelo Anthony and Paul George for one year? Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, let's say it's one year, right? I'd rather have those two guys for one year. I, yeah. n- no questions asked. So in this in this move by Presti, these moves by Presti over this offseason, Oklahoma City is definitely not just, you know, taking a knee no, and letting it, let, you know, we're not just – and falling on our butts and, you know, letting Westbrook walk out the door after he struggles through another season, stuff like that, as honestly I thought we would be. You know, to start yeah. before this summer started and kind of into the season, last season I was like, you know what? This could be bleak. This could be Russell Westbrook yeah. running it back again. 
maybe Brianus plays a little bit better, you know, maybe Doug McDermott finds a kind of role, maybe Jeremy Grant does a little bit better, you know, whatever, to holy crap, we just added two all-stars yeah. and slimmed up our <laughs> roster. And at the end of the day, as a Thunder fan, you go to bed knowing, hey, if all three guys walk, if Westbrook, Paul George, and Carmelo Anthony all walk away from their, you know, contracts, don't come back to Oklahoma City, there is so much cap space this team has. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, definitely. It's 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 not as bleak of a future as it could have been. Right. It's just not. No matter what, we're set up good, and that's man. I'm excited. I'm just. Yeah. I'm so pumped. I'm super excited, man. Like having like three stellar players is just like giving me like giddy memories of. The, I mean that year that we went to the finals. It, it totally is. And I know the Carmelo's getting a little old, but he's still a fantastic shooter. Paul George is like a dynamic kind of midway point between Carmelo and shooting and driving and defensive capabilities. And, I mean, Russell Westbrook is Russell freaking Westbrook. I mean, <laughs> he's he's going to do what he's best at doing everything on the court. Um, so I'm pumped. I, I think, uh, I mean, what is it? You got us, Golden State Warriors definitely yep. in the West, and then Spurs are always going to be – Crazy James Harden, yeah, uh, with Houston, and then anybody like the fifth seed might. I mean, the fifth seed could range from being the Nuggets to the I mean, Timberwolves are supposed to, to be the pretty good this year. So. Yeah, whoever. But um, my thing is, but we're gonna be up there in that <laughs> class of uh, class of good teams in the West. So uh, we we we'll be holding down the fort in Oklahoma City. Yeah. Like like <laughs> the second seed overall. You know that Christmas Day matchup and other matchups. The Thunder are getting a lot of TV time this year, more yeah. than normal. And I know that type of stuff is scheduled after the addition of Paul George was out of the team. But now, I mean, Oklahoma City Thunder is much watch basketball for anyone. This this is a game changer. Yeah. Because no longer is it, oh, I want to watch Russell Westbrook kind of run around and take contested jumpers and whatever, which, as a Thunder fan, I love seeing him do that. Right. Like, that's the coolest thing ever when he's like, you know, being the Denver Nuggets and Nick Cock kicking him out of the playoffs, <laughs> and the Denver Nuggets <laughs> fans are like, we don't know what happened, but we are hyped, you know? Like, <laughs> right. that type of stuff is awesome. But then you have stuff where it's just going to go in. Well, now they got Carmelo and Paul George, man. Anytime they are, anytime that team plays, I want to watch, you know? Yeah. All 82 games, it's like, man, I want to watch basketball tonight. I think with the addition of Carmelo Anthony as well, is something where Carmelo Anthony. Is not going to Carmelo Anthony with the Knicks and with the Nuggets, right? right? The best team Carmelo Anthony ever played on was with a much older version of Allen Iverson, right? You know, and that was the team that got to the playoffs and went against the Lakers, right? I think it was in 09 or 2010 or something before he got traded to the Knicks, okay? Yeah. <laughs> then this guy gets traded to the Knicks and plays for a while, you know. Basically, the Knicks had to trade almost their entire, I mean, a lot of their roster for Carmelo. So when he gets there, he is the scorer, you know, all type of stuff. But for years, Carmelo Anthony's been the only scorer on the Knicks. It's been him by himself, you know. Yeah. And when he was able to take a team to the playoffs, it was a huge accomplishment. And how far will he get? And then it was, well, okay, Carmelo's only so good, stuff like that. You know, he can only do right. so much. Yeah, Carmelo Anthony's not LeBron James. He can't take a team that is a that has Daniel Booby Gibson, uh, <laughs> Igalskis, um Man, I'm I'm dropping names, I, I, you know, off of the team that played with him. Um, I think I forget if uh, he's told if was on guy. that team or not. But in like the '06 when LeBron came to the league and he took that team, you know, to the yeah. finals against the Spurs, Carmelo Anthony is not that type of player. Okay, he's no. just he's not able to do that. He's not able to will a team to you know and just go out there and beat everyone, right? But now. Carmelo Anthony, we've seen for years in the Olympics, is an amazing Olympics player when he's yeah. surrounded by really, really good players. And he was when he played with that Nuggets team. And you're right, Seth. Carmelo Anthony is getting a little bit older. But let's say he plays 30 minutes a night, max, right? Right. No. Let's say Patrick Patterson, you know, plays 25 minutes or so a game or something. That's on average what he played last season. But let's say Patrick Patterson gives him some time off the court. You know, you've got Paul George to look to. You've got Westbrook to look to. He will have – So we thought – Walter and I, when we did the last podcast, thought, man, Patrick Patterson's going to be able to knock down these some corner threes because he's just going to be wide open because <laughs> because of Paul George and Russell Westbrook being able to just space the floor. 
Yeah. Hold on a second. Now it's well, Carmelo Anthony is going to be wide open from three yeah. forever. You know, those I corner mean, threes, man. That's his shot. So. That that that's like, his thing, and it's ISO mellow or it's hoodie mellow. You know, he's just yeah. taking people to town. It. Yeah, all of a sudden we're not looking at Carmelo Anthony and going, man, can he play defense? We're not looking at him. No, you know that's not that's not Thunder thing. We're looking at him going, man, can he give us a can he give us a couple buckets here and there? Yeah, you know, I'm like that role change will be hard for the whole team for him, oh. for Paul George, for Russell Westbrook, all three of those superstars to mesh with. You know, so right. Westbrook's a superstar. I think Paul George could be the, after this season, stuff like that. But he's definitely an all star, and so is Melo. After this, you know, we'll hit some speed bumps, but man, this is off to a great start. I know, man. Like, that's probably the biggest thing that I'm looking forward to is like this last season was riveting. I mean, Russell Westbrook was an absolute maniac, and it was the, probably the most fun basketball to watch ever. I mean, I know he missed a lot of shots, but it was awesome. But now he doesn't have to do all the work, which is what I'm most looking forward to. We can have him in the fourth quarter um, going as hard as he can because we, he's had help. Um, and I understand that he did have help. He did trust his team. I mean, he didn't get over 10 assists a game um, by not trusting his team like he definitely did. But having other big personalities on the court to be able to take um, some of that load off of him, um, I'm thinking is probably the big part. And, yes, they were, there will be conflicting personalities. I mean, you saw it the last couple of years that we had Kevin Durant. Um, they didn't really get along on the court. It's two just massive uh, egos um, bashing heads on the court. And so I think there will probably be a little bit of that. But, um, I mean, they're starting camp here in the next couple of days, right, um, to get ready for the season. So, I mean, we'll see how all that plays out. Hopefully they uh, work out the kinks before they hit um, the court against the Knicks in the first game. So, um, but, yeah. Um, I'm hyped. Yeah. I'm hyped, man. <laughs> I'm excited. I, I, uh, I, wanna, I know we want to talk about some other stuff and sadly recap that OSU game and then well, for <laughs> you, luckily, recap the AAU game, how that turned out. But, I um I I don't I don't know. It's it's one of those things where there there is a there is a ceiling that is just so much higher. Right. You know, Michael Jordan said the roof is the ceiling, the ceiling's the roof. I don't know what that meant, but <laughs> I would love to say that the ceiling right now is not the roof. You know, there is right. no there is no roof anymore. Um and we we as an organization, as the Thunder organization can just be just excited, you know. Yeah. Yeah. After the season, you know, Laker fans are going to be in the comments of every single thing. Hey, well, have fun before Paul George comes. You have fun watching us succeed, you know. Yeah. While Lonzo <laughs> Ball, the 63rd best player in the league, has his fun, you know, yeah. getting guarded by NBA defenders, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Patrick Beverly's going to put that guy and just shut him down. Like just like he shut down Russell Westbrook, just like he shut down other guys. You know, yep. have fun having Brandon Ingram and those guys. You know, huh? So we still have Robertson, right? Yeah, we still got Robertson. Okay, oh, yeah, yeah, we're okay. still we're still sitting like guys. We're yeah. still pretty solid on oh, defense. Oh yeah, yeah. So I'm not worried about defensively whatsoever. No, no, but like I'm just saying, if like all the Lakers fans who want to talk smack and you know be whatever and just say have fun before you know Paul George comes here. That's if. That's still an if. That's Paul George is not coming out tomorrow and going. Hey, Thunder, just want to let you know, this will be my last season in Oklahoma City. After this, I'm going. He has, He's free to make his own decisions. Westbrook can leave, too. But you know what? You guys can have fun watching this entire 2017-2018 season without those guys on your team. And you can be a pseudo-Thunder fan <laughs> until they join, <laughs> yeah. if that's really your thing. We'll love to hear you guys cheer him on in Staples Center, right? I mean, I'm sure there'll be so many. I can't wait for Paul George to go to the Lakers and play him the first time, right? That'll be just... That'll be incredible. <laughs> be just you know, I, I'm very curious how he'll play that game. But every single time Russell Westbrook goes and plays against the Lakers, he drops about a fifty on him. You know, <laughs> yep. even with KD on the team, he Russell Westbrook made it a mission just to go. I want to silence the whole LA crowd. And you know what? He showed off those nights when he yep. came back home. I would be very surprised if Paul George does not do the same. And Definitely. at the end of the day, this is the roster we got. Had you know. This team has this roster for the rest of the season, and there's the, the possibilities are endless. You know, yeah. If at the end of it, if the Thunder are had a couple injuries, you know, and we got to go absolutely worst case scenario, all right. You know what? Let's trade Carmelo Anthony or Paul George to the to Cleveland. See if they'll offer up that first round Brooklyn pick for you know yeah. for them, and go from there, and just you know go. Hey, you know what? Didn't work out too well, but this is just a much better position. I just want to reiterate that. 
no, for sure. It's a much and better like, position than we could have been in. And you can talk about like them going back to L.A. or something like that, and like that it might get in their head. But I think every NBA player, good or bad, their mission in a season is to win a national championship. And whether we get to there or not, our mission is to win. It's not to cater to any fans in any type of city. It's it's to win games. And so like um, I think Paul George is going to go ham and. Uh, Los Angeles, I think he's going to go ham in Los Angeles against the Clippers. I think he's going to go ham against everybody. And so um, I I think he's really trying to prove himself um, on a bigger stage. I mean, the Pacers were a decent team, but he's he's playing with some rock star talent. And so I, I'm thinking he's definitely trying to prove himself again with Russell Westbrook and with Carmelo Anthony. So Yeah, these three guys have never been able to play with that third superstar or that third all-star in their right. lineup. You know, I know Westbrook did when it was James Harden, but that's when James Harden was sixth man of the year and was nowhere clear, nowhere near an MVP caliber guy like he is today. Right. And that's also when Westbrook wasn't an MVP caliber guy. No, you know, it was KD. Yeah, there was supporting so roles. So this huge, huge move for Sam Presti. Really, really glad to see him. On another smaller note, before we move on a little bit, Isaiah, I think his name's Cannon, Thunder signed as well today, which honestly makes me feel better. The Thunder just trying to sign one more dude because we had the extra roster spot since we traded okay. McDermott and a Cantor gotcha, gotcha. Um, from Mello and so we had the extra roster spot as a team quickly signed another point guard who's not Samash Christian so that <laughs> props you know what because if Raymond Felton is just not cutting it we got another guy to look to that's right. really really good um, also Seth I want to ask did you get a chance to look at those uh, new Thunder jerseys the statement jerseys I saw the ones with like the Oklahoma City skyline is that the jerseys that you're talking about? No, I have no. not seen the new ones. No, I can pull it up real quick here. But we have not done a podcast, Bethlehem Brother, since those jerseys have come out. And the uh, Thunder Statement jerseys are amazing. <laughs> I am, again, very, very hyped on this, um, on the jerseys. Uh, not a lot of people know this, but do you know I share a birthday with uh, one Thunder player exactly to the year and day? Is it Steven Adams? No, oh, no, no. I know he's close. No, uh, he's, yeah, he's close. I think I'm older than Stephen Adams. But uh, it is, um, it is Alex Aprinas. <laughs> um, the Spanish assassin or the conquista, conquistador or whatever it was. <laughs> um, he, yeah, I, so I will definitely be picking up a new Thunder Nike 2017-2018 uniform um, with the Loud City um, kind of version of the uniform and stuff like that. And it, it looks real good. It looks like sweet. Um, of all the Thunder Unis there's been, that thing looks amazing. You don't like the old school Navy? Just kidding. That's a um, joke. That's no. a joke. Yeah. <laughs> I really didn't. <laughs> Everyone knows that by now. Um, yeah, but they got kind of like the lines on the back too a little bit. And it looks like, looks like it has the orange, a little bit of white in there, a little bit of blue. Around the arms, um, it's a very clean, clean. I mean, it's not too clean with the stripes on the back and stuff, but it's it's a dang good jersey. And of all the statement jerseys that were put out, it's it, it's definitely my it's favorite. But I like the shake and the letters, like all the dang earthquakes we've been having. So, <laughs> oh, ooh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I like uh, how the uh, hey, fracking reference made a, yeah, made a that wasn't a fracking made I was just into the podcast. But, you know. <laughs> I can put two and two together. You can put, yeah. I can put two that's, together. That's on you. I didn't say it. No, I did. I'm not afraid. <laughs> um, yeah, but it it's just uh, it's one of those things where we've we've got dang good looking jerseys now um, as a team, and they you know got some shorts with them and stuff too. It's just, I'm just I'm real happy that the Thunder decided to go out there on a little bit of a limb. You know, generally yeah. our jerseys are knocked and the very whole, conservative. Right, so. the whole logo and stuff like that is knocked for being. You know, it's a very conservative state that's been knocked as conservative jerseys. <laughs> but um, it's just out on the limb a little bit. No, I'm loving it. Um, you know, I, I really, really am. So, props to the Thunder for that one. Um, out of all the statement jerseys, by far and away that was the best. Um, the Portland Trailblazers had some all red ones and um. They're okay. They honestly remind me of the Houston Rockets a little bit. I know there's only so many colors. This new Thunder jersey, like, I know that's probably terrible for me to say, but it looks a heck of a lot like Memphis's jerseys from last year. <laughs> it's got the same colors. Yeah. So maybe that's just me. 
Yeah, I cool. um yeah, Portland Trailblazers, they got some okay jerseys too. I can't knock them for that one. But I, I, I like the I like the I like the Thunder jerseys the best out of all the ones that were put oh, out there. Um uh, but yeah, they're the Portland ones with the black stripe and, and you know the Portland name and stuff. Red. Power Rangers. Yeah, Portland Power Rangers. There we go. <laughs> Got a new nickname already. I like it. It's up on my podcast. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, they... Like Power Rangers. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much... I know Sam is just going to love listening to this because Sam, of course, loves loves it when people talk about jerseys and jerseys in general. <laughs> Thinks it's uh, one of the greatest things ever. a fashionista? Well, I, I wore like a... Or what was it? I just wanted him to hear that when he listens to this. So. Yeah, <laughs> I wore I wore a jersey whenever I recorded the podcast uh, for a while, and then I think Calvin did before me, and it's been a uh, always got under Sam's skin. I just think he, it's because he uh, he can't rock a jersey. I don't I don't know. I don't know. I don't what know. It is. Uh, he probably I'm gonna, can't. I'm gonna throw more shade on Sam That's if, okay. I, if I can because he's not <laughs> here. Um, <laughs> there you go. He bailed. That's on him. Yeah, it's on him. Yeah. Um. Anyways, though, Seth. Sadly, I think we got to move on to the uh, saddest part of the podcast uh, here. We'll yeah. end it with the OU talk. Okay, thank so you. So we'll end it on a good <laughs> note. We'll end it on a good note. But um, Oklahoma State Cowboys played this weekend, and they played just yesterday. We're recording this on yeah. Sunday night. I don't know exactly when we'll get to your little stay near, but we, <laughs> the right. um, Cowboys played uh, last yesterday. 2-3 kickoff. OSU was losing three linemen, had four turnovers. Just a bad game. What, what, what were your thoughts on this? You know, uh, going into this uh, weekend, um, this was one of those games that uh, I was really hoping game day would be at. It seemed like one of the bigger um, matchups this week. I mean, there wasn't really many uh, ranked teams facing off against other ranked teams, and I think this was one of the uh, better ones this season um, so far. And, uh, I mean, TCU is praised, again, for its defense, and um, they definitely showed out this weekend. Um, it was disappointing, though. Um I mean, we've been looking at Mason Rudolph and Baker Mayfield almost head-to-head uh, this season uh, for the Heisman race. And I'm not saying that, that that's not still the case. Um, but uh kind of let me down. I was really rooting for um, OSU for like the first time in my life. Uh, <laughs> I'm a big OU fan. So, um, I don't know. I, again, didn't get a chance to watch the game. Um, been doing homework and stuff. But uh, I expected more um, from OSU. And I'm, I'm expecting a lot more from them in the coming weeks. Uh, again, I'm looking forward to Bedlam big time, um, but I don't I don't see this uh, loss putting OSU in any kind of slump. I think it's going to fire them up, um, especially for next week. So um, that's just me, though. I hope I hope you're right. Um, as an OSU fan, you know, and, and student, this was hard. This was something where at the end of the game, OSU had a chance to win the game, and for whatever reason, Mike Yurcich decided. You know, let's let's have a um, wide receiver throw the ball when already Mason Reynolds in the groove and stuff. And yeah, even down the whole game, you have a chance to cut it to, you know, a one touchdown game, or, or that might have even been the one that would tie it up. I forget exactly. It just, what the heck, man? Um, that was really really tough to deal with. And I just, the whole the whole game was tough. You know, TCU just had the lead, had the advantage for throughout really the whole game, and. They really kind of controlled everything. Uh, OSU's defense was on the field way more than it should have been. The time of possession is just so lopsided in TCU's right. favor. You know, they're, TCU just ran the ball really, really well, and their defense really st- stopped OSU's offense. And Mason Rudolph still had like 398 yards passing, I think, two or three TDs, which, don't get me wrong, is incredible. But when it, the plays mattered the most. Right. There were turnovers, you know, and it, it it's and there were a couple of times where TC you could have picked up off Mason Rudolph a couple more times, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's one of those things where I, you know, at the end of the day, I'm going. I mean, Oklahoma State got kind of lucky; they were still in it at the end, you know. And no, I'm t- I totally agree. It's like um, Mason Rudolph has been um, pretty remarkable um, this season up until this game, and even in this game, uh, thrown for so many stinking yards, but. I, O S U really needs to improve on its offensive line um this next week, uh, giving him enough protection to throw good throws. Um their receiving core is one of the best in the country. Um he's got so many stinking targets he can throw to. Um but you need to give him time to get the ball out of there. You do that, uh I totally believe OSU can win the rest of the games except Bedlam. Uh but that's just me. <laughs> so 
We'll leave that it's as it is. I, you know, OU looks un- OU looked unbeatable until last night when they played Baylor. Oh, man. That's that's a very head scratching game. But uh, here's the thing, though, it's it's one of those things as an OSU fan. There's that's the really that's the difference between the two schools right now. Is at the end of the day, there is an OU team who, when it matters most, still figures out a way to get it done. You know, yeah. figures out a way to get over that hump. You know, and win the game. And there's an OSU team that just Sometimes it just doesn't, you know. Last season, OSU did a lot of the time. A lot of the time they did. They came back in games. They're right. I mean, but last two years, OSU has throttled TCU. It hasn't been a game at halftime, you know. And that's kind of what I expected this this time. I know TCU was like, you know, first in defense and first in rushing defense, big 12, but that's their three games. That doesn't matter a ton to me. No. Excuse me. And I just... I'm wondering at the end of the day, what will OSU do differently? How, you know, I mean, OSU's got to go to Texas Tech this this weekend. It's a primetime game, it's, you know, Saturday night at 7 p.m. H- how are they going to fare? How is th- what's the team morale going to be like? Are you know, will two offensive linemen will those guys be back? Are they out for the season? You know, will that third offensive lineman still be at dealing with issues? I know the best offensive lineman that OSU had, Zach Crabtree, was out. It's just OSU's always had an issue with offensive li- and defensive linemen, you know. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you have Manuel Ogba, right? Well, OSU doesn't have a problem with you know defensive linemen. And then you guys had like Vincent Taylor, Vincent Taylor last year, defensive line, not really a problem. But I feel like this was the year. I feel like this was OSU's by far and away of all the chances OSU had. This was the year. And right now as an OSU fan, I'm kind of sitting here going, oh, we're not out of it yet, you know. a lot. Still got a lot of football to play. If you're going to lose so. a game, I'd rather lose early than late, right. you know. Um, but but come on, boys. You know, this was, this was you know, a uh, top 25 matchup. You're right, college game day didn't come to Oklahoma State. And that that's head-scratching as it is. Why they went to New York City. Right. Which and that's I just mean, another big that's just a weird like reputation that they're taking into account. I, well, honestly, honestly so. though, I want to say this though: if TCU had been ranked 16 when played OU this past weekend, that yep. you guys would have gotten game day. You guys would have gotten that that. But that that's one of those things where it's OSU needs to. If OSU shows up in la- you know yesterday's game, everyone's going, man, college game day missed out on a great one. Yeah. You know, or or, or wow, college game day missed out on if OSU comes back in the game. College game, game day missed out on a great one. College game day should have been it, you know, oh, to see OSU win. That was a good matchup. Or if OSU just even d- beats the crowd at TCU, like I thought would happen, but didn't clearly. Man, college game day, what are they doing in New York City? You know, uh, OSU team wouldn't throttle the TCU team or whatever, right? It's um, it it's just that was weird. I but OSU's got one of those games. Yeah. So um, it's it's it's. I don't know. It's uh, it's it's hard to deal with. It's an OSU fan. It's really hard to deal with. No, I get I get that. And again, I'm an OU fan. Like I can't reiterate that enough. So I'm a little biased, but I think that um, the way um that Baker Mayfield handles his team and hypes his team up is what um I think Mason Rudolph needs to really take to heart is to get his team in the mindset to win games. Um, you you can get hyped up by your coach all day. You can get hyped up from watching film all week, um, but sh- but Mason Rudolph needs to evolve into um, a leader of his team that gets his team uh, completely ready um, for these games, like 150 percent, um, and be that game manager that um, pushes his team to the limit. He needs to have the mindset of a winner, and I think that he definitely did have that, and maybe a little overconfidence with the amount of uh, yardage he got in the first three games. Um, this season, so um, that's my one point to Mason Rudolph. You're an excellent, excellent quarterback um, with a lot of th- with all the tools around. You need to win, um, and just and just realizing that that you have the potential to be um, in contention for the Big 12 championship, and then even potentially uh, getting that Final Four at the end of the year if we went out um, smashing teams, and maybe you beat OU. I don't know. Um, Bedlam's always a scary game, but uh, OSU has all the tools to get there this year. Um, it just takes that that uh, confidence and that 150% every game um, to get there. So, 
but I think OSU is a great team this year, and this is the year that they need to push it because Mason Rudolph's last yeah this year. Is his last season. So um, he's gone after this game. You after you have season. to get him um, in his own, and I know that's probably a cliche thing to say, but um, but it's right. It is. It, 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 that's the thing, though. It's he's right. He's a great player. He just needs to. Um, you know, there's take there's command. a clip from the uh, I think it's the, it's the South Alabama or the Tulsa game. Where Mason Rudolph is standing in a huddle, team huddle, right? And he's leading the huddle and he's yelling at everyone, you know, and he's just he's just beating the crap out of whoever's in front of him. He's just punching his back as hard as he can, yeah. you know, of the offensive lineman. And there's also then there's the line where it's Baker Mayfield playing the flag, right? <laughs> OSU fan, I hated that. <laughs> everyone hated, hated that. that. <laughs> besides OU fans, but everyone oh, I loved it. it. Right, right. But that's that's the difference though. So you know, and as an OSU fan, I don't know if I would have if I would have loved Mason Rudolph done that or not, right? Until I see it, I'd like to think I would love it because it was so showy. <laughs> but I don't know if I uh, maybe you know if OSU beats OU, uh, you know, let let's say there was if you OSU know, beats OU, I expect Mason Rudolph to plant an OSU flag in the middle of that field. Right. I totally do. Yeah, one hundred percent. That's one of those things, right? <laughs> you know. I want to see the Mason Rudolph where he's just beating the crap out of the guy in front of him, firing up the team in the huddle before the game starts. And he starts. to do that every game. Right. I want to see that Mason Rudolph yeah. every single time. But I also want to see the Mason Rudolph who isn't overthrowing guys by 10 yards, isn't right. isn't isn't doing weird, random, just kind of... Like, that game, like, it almost seems... Like, if I I would almost bet you if OSU could go back and play that game yesterday one more time with healthy linemen but the same morale, they'd probably lose again. You know, it just—it was a weird, yeah. like morale kind of thing. And you know, OSU ran the ball so many times, so many times. And it's one of those things where earlier in the game, I would have loved to see one of those, you know, Mason Rudolph throws to Dylan Stoner, who, you know, then throws it down the field to Jalen McCluskey or whoever I figure was on, open on that side of the field, right? Right. I'd love to see that earlier in the game when the offense wasn't working, not later in the game when the offense not was as the last resort. Working. Yeah. Like, I mean, uh, open up the playbook to you know. Let's do a flea flicker. Let's do some crazy stuff to, to you know, if, if if it's the second quarter and we're down, you know, three scores, 17 points for most of the game, let's do one of those things earlier in the game. Not not be it, you know. Right. Open the playbook wide open earlier in the game and try to get the momentum swinging back our way earlier in the game. Not with six minutes left. Right, right. That's, that's where it gets ridiculous. Anyway, so I think um, I think worst case scenario for OSU is they lose that you know they lost that game, dropped to I think fifteenth or fourteenth yep. in the polls, right you know, and um, and just, you know, just a sour taste in my mouth, you know. TCU came in and beat us. There's not, it's not one of those things. It's not a Central Michigan game last year, you know. Yeah. There was one play where like uh, where I um I was at the game, so I wasn't able to see this real well, but. There was one play where I guess TCU ruled that they it was ruled that they scored the touchdown even though they really didn't. Yeah. It was like within like an inch of the yard line or goal line or something like that. I'm being told this by friends. So okay. actually Sam's <laughs> one of the guys who told me this. So <laughs> it that's one of those things where I, yeah, I need to go back and watch the game and figure out what happened there, but that was rough, you know. Right. Of course. But then again, it's not like TCU beat us by seven on that play, right? right. So, excuses can be there as all you want. It, it's a sour taste in my mouth as an OSU fan, and it probably will for some time, and I just really hope they can bounce back against Tech this weekend. And see, like, it, it, it leaves a sour taste in my mouth for sure, but it's – college football is um, my favorite thing to watch, and, and I love it because, uh, I mean, you look at teams this year and last year, and once you win – you lose. You look immediately to the next week, um, and that's what I hope Mason Rudolph did. As soon as he got done with that game, went to the locker room, he uh, just immediately started looking at next week's game. Um, what did he do wrong? What can he improve on? And um, I'm sure he definitely did that, um, as well as the rest of the team, uh, defense and offensive line were both just like, that sucked. We can't do that again. What do we do next week? And I guarantee you they're already working on it. Here's here's the one thing I, I you know, here's the glass half full version of this, um, and this kind of discussion out. OSU's still fifteenth in the country. They're right. not out of the top twenty five. No. They're not even in the latter half of the top twenty. You know, they're not twenty twenty five. They have every chance to keep winning and wait for you know, I mean, for example, OSU, you win Bedlam, <laughs> hey, sky's the limit, you know. Yeah. You you know, if you can beat a number which I think will consistently stay number, you know, top five team 
yeah. OU right. will stay top five in the country if they don't lose, of course. But if, if OSU wins out and if TCU wins out, OSU's worst case scenario is they play TCU again for the Big 12 championship. Right. That's how that's how that works now. No, totally. So, an OSU fan, that's the glass half full version. No, oh, definitely. Um, you got you know the next game you got is Tech. You got a week off. You play Baylor. Then you go down to Texas, which I'm very nervous about because Texas. That's a wild OS, card, OSU man. OSU all time is seven and twenty four against Texas. Okay, I want to ask you a question here. How many times do you, how OSU seven and twenty four all times all time against Texas? How many of those wins do you think has come since Mike Gundy's been the head coach of OSU? I don't know. Do, do, do. No, no, no idea. idea. Two, five. Okay. In a row. Wow. So before these last five wins by OSU, they were two and twenty-four all time against Texas. Jeez. That is insane. Yeah. <laughs> and that that stat right there doesn't like it should give me the greatest confidence, but it doesn't just because we got to go down to Texas and. Be it'll six be, times in a row. It'll be a lot of part of the season, you know. But the sixth time we win in a row, and it's just it. It's not an easy place to play, you know. Texas I mean, is a wild card. They like always happen. I mean, I know you Texas is a big rival for you, but I mean Oklahoma and Texas just in general, <laughs> like they they pull out everything whenever they play both of our teams. So, um, it's it's a crazy place to play too. So, um. Anyways, be good game. let's uh, let's move on to this uh, OU discussion that I'm just so hyped about here. So, yeah. <laughs> um, the the Sooners went to Waco, which, as OSU fans know, is a very hard place to play because OSU lost their last year. Yeah, um, it's a weird atmosphere and stuff. Props to Baylor; they've got an amazing stadium. Not an amazing athletic department, but an amazing <laughs> stadium. <laughs> right. Um, it's built by dirty money. Yeah. No. It really <laughs> probably. I mean, it, it, I mean, I, I think we can joke. almost get a court ruling on that. that <laughs> we is, might be. You know. <laughs> um, but you know, you know, at one point I know it was tied twenty-eight up, and then OU yeah. just straight up just went on a huge scoring spree. I honestly, after OSC loses a game, I pretty much go to bed. Yeah. Yeah, I pretty much called a night on that. So I think I was, in, I think I was asleep by nine. I might have woken up when. Uh, I woke up at some point and I saw Penn State score that last play of the game. I don't know how I got that lucky I woke up, but <laughs> I definitely faded back to sleep and woke back up when it was like 49, 41, but the game was over then, you know, right. you'd won. So I don't know how Baylor, who previously was 0-3 before that game, of course now they're 0-4, but, right, but I, I, I don't know how a team like Liberty, UTSA, and Duke, Duke could be a decent team. We don't know. Duke could be a decent. <laughs> they could be a middle of the road ACC team. Baylor could be worse than the Big Twelve. We don't know, right? Um, but I don't know how those teams. You so many tro- so much trouble and stuff like that, and you get hyped up just for that OU game. But then again, I, Baylor's got to view every. Baylor had to view that OU game as their Super Bowl. So no, if there's totally. one game that I got up for. Probably, I mean, it's you guys. I don't know if they'll really be good enough for any team the rest of the season, you know. And that was that was weird. Ba- I will say this: Baker Mayfield makes all those freshmen, receivers, running backs, whatever, look real good, look like seniors. Yeah, that's what he does. <laughs> that's 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 what he's able to do. Yeah. He makes those guys look like seniors. No, I, I completely agree. It's that game was a little worrying. Um, because of all the hype before, like I mean, we were talking about the Baylor game uh, two weeks before. I mean, we expected to beat the heck out of Tulane, and we expected to beat the heck out of Baylor. Um, but we were looking forward to this as the uh, start of conference play. But I mean, people were saying all week it's going to be a seventy to zero game. It's going to be a fifty to zero game if we get the chance. They to, could we need score to run, 100. We need to run over Baylor. They are the worst team in college football, and so having that um, run into my brain over and over all week, um, and then seeing. Baylor score 41 points against us is worrying. Having the two-lane game, um, having two-lane score as many points as they did. And then, of course, we uh, uh, I say we because I go to OU, but having OU then uh, run over two-lane in the second half, um, it's worrying. Um, I do like um, Baylor's stat line. I think his stats are ridiculous um, in completion percentage, um, having very minimal turnovers. So I know we've found the ball a couple times. Um, but I like um, for the fact, like, I did listen to both the OU game and the OSU game, and having a team that can um, finish games um, was definitely what you saw against Baylor. Um, You had playing a team that was a lot better than you expected, um, but still being able to come out with a win, uh, doesn't matter how many points you won by, 
Um, I guess it does matter in the rankings and such, but uh, um, I'm just glad uh, OU pulled it out. Um, I do like that we're using um, p different people across the board. Uh, what's that guy's CD Lamb? Um, he's good. He's a great, he's a good guy. He's becoming a really good uh, tool for Baker Mayfield, and I really enjoy um, watching him play. Uh, Mark Andrews, I think, um, still in 100, percent but seeing him next week um, against Iowa State will be cool. Or do we have a bye week this week? I don't know. Iowa State's the next game, so um, I think Mark Andrews will be 100 percent for that and having him healthy, um, especially like he was in the first two games. He was um, fantastic. So. This game was a little worrying. Um, I'm, I'm ready to see everybody healthy again and how um, we play against uh, Iowa State, which is, I think, universally uh, considered also a uh, mediocre team in the Big 12, similar to Baylor. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, we, we got OU, OSU, and TCU. I think those are the top three. Texas, again, is a wild card. Um, they could come out and kill it. I mean, Kansas State as well. So um, it'll be interesting. Um I, I have full faith in uh, Baker Mayfield and our offensive line, giving him plenty of time to throw the ball. Um, but having Baylor score 41 points is a little disconcerting for um, our defensive capabilities, uh, especially against a team that we should completely annihilate. So um, I don't know. Um, I still think uh, he's the best in the Big 12 um, after this weekend, but it's not as uh, separated as um, I think we thought before conference play. So, um, to totally with you on that one. I I think that OU is still the best Big Twelve. There's no reason to say that they're not. Um, now maybe it's maybe TCU is a little bit closer, right? Because they came into Bloomington Stadium and beat OSU, um, and did it, did it pretty good. You know, if I'm an OU fan, I'm kind of worried about that TCU game when you guys play them, just because you play them right after you play OSU and we, so you fans will know you guys will get up for Bedlam. That's that's not a question. I mean, we get you up know? for Bedlam, we get up for OU Texas, but every time we play Texas, every time we play OSU, it's, it's a nail biter. Happen. It's a nail biter. Anything could happen. Um, uh, the coaches pull out all the all the stops. The quarterbacks go insane. Um, it's it's like a bowl game. Um, yeah. Every, every time. Um, yeah. You pull you pull out everything. Um, I had a question for you, if uh, you don't mind. Go for and it. And that's um. With this loss against TCU with OSU, um, with the uh, close game against Baylor and with the really slow start against uh, Tulane, um, how do you feel this positions the Big 12? Um, they, I, again, a lot of people would think that um, Big 12 is the worst of the Power 5 conferences. I mean, it's a little different this year because the SEC, I think, is not nearly as powerful as they were. I mean, they have Alabama, but... Um, that's really it, in my opinion. And, of course, Clemson's still great. Um, but having these closer games than I think we expected um, before conference play, how do you think uh, the College Football Playoff Committee thinks about the Big 12 um, like winning games? I I think that the, the Playoff Committee views bigger games more than anything else. So I think the Playoff Committee puts more weight on the fact that Oh, you went into the horseshoe and beat Ohio State like the way they did, you know, like a drum. I think because that was reflected last year whenever Ohio State was the number two seed in the college football playoffs at the end of the season, right? And yeah. I think Ohio State had one loss, if, right, if I remember correctly. It did. So I think that type of stuff means a lot more when you play somebody out of conference and you use that part of your schedule to win, right? And then I think at the end of it, at the end of the day, you know, oh, if OU makes statement wins, keeps making statement wins, or if TCU does, or whoever it is, the thing is, TCU played an Arkansas team who we're pretty sure is pretty bad, but <laughs> then again, this is only four games in the season, so it's hard to tell. Right. If Arkansas ends up being the second best team in the, you know, SEC West next to Alabama, it, it could be one of those things where we're going, man, TCU is pretty dang good, yeah. you know, and if... TCU beats OU. It's okay. Well, TCU is really, really good. <laughs> TCU beats OU. What is <laughs> I think what is life? Big um, Twelve goes <laughs> goes, goes under. into the. <laughs> I think uh, we uh, go completely under if TCU beats OU. It's not a good time. Right, but I, <laughs> besides the fact of smaller school of schools who don't usually get the recognition, yeah, you know. So I think that at the end of the day, the College Football Playoff Committee gives bigger schools who've known to be good for a while 
more recognition than anything else. So I think yeah, that, that for true. OU fans, you're going, poof, that was scary yesterday, but at least we won. <laughs> yeah. We got a bye week now. Uh, you know, we go play uh, Iowa State, and then we play Texas, and then, you know, our next next row game is against K-State in, what, three weeks from now, four weeks? So that's one of those things where you're just kind of, you know, OU fans, I think you'd be scared, but now – now I think oh he's gonna go well we better go whoop Iowa State we, we don't really know what's gonna happen <laughs> yeah but yes. here's the thing you guys went and played at Baylor right that was your fr- that was the se- that was the second away game of the season for you guys besides you know playing at the Horseshoe right um, <laughs> in Columbus and Ohio State and so I think I think as OU fans you're you're definitely in the driver's seat you know a cultural playoffs if you guys went out you'll be top four it won't be a problem. Right. It's somebody like TCU who comes into Oklahoma State, beats the number 16 in the country, moves up to the top 10 in the polls, who, you know, if TCU has some... So let's say TCU, OU, and OSU all have one loss, right? Let's say, right. The, end of, let's say the, end of the end of the day, um, OU beats TCU, OSU beats OU, each has one loss headed into the end of the season, right? Right. The Big 12 Championship, let's say, I forget what the tiebreaker is, but let's say OU plays OSU, right? So you're TCU, you're sitting there, you're going, okay, we only have one loss. We've beaten one of these teams who's playing in the championship, but we've also lost the other team, right? Right. Are we going to get that fourth seed? And is the other Big 12 team going to get that first? Or, you know, like what happens? Right, right. And I think that's part of it. I, I have a hard time thinking that the Big 12 would be left out of the college football playoff if they have teams. Well, they won't be if they have a team that's undefeated. That's just period. Right, right. But if they have a team that's one loss, that's OU, I have a hard time thinking they'll be out of it. But if a team that's one loss, that's not OU, and I mean, clearly it's not going to be Texas, and <laughs> it's, not the, it's not a big name team, then I, I feel like it, you just got to be really worried now. Like, as an OSU fan, I'm really worried we won't make the playoffs because we have one loss. Right. Be, if Alabama loses one game, Clemson loses one, OU loses one, OSU has one loss, and let's say, I don't know, Washington or whoever in the Pac-12... You know what USC hasn't lost yet, no. so they look pretty weird. But let's say they lose. You know, I think if all if the if the best team out of the Power Five loses one game, but the best teams out of the other Power Five conferences are USC, Clemson, Alabama. Um, gosh, USC, Clemson, Alabama. You said Washington. And, uh, well, that's that's Pac-12 though. Who am I missing now? I'm missing somebody. But let's you know. So you got OU, right? Right. Um, oh, and let's say you got. I'm sorry, Big Ten fans. Um, let's say you got what Ohio State, right? Yeah. Um, let's say you know or Michigan. Let's so let's say all those five, you know, they're all big names. Mm-hmm. I feel like OU is going to get in no matter what. I feel like Ohio State or Michigan would get in no matter what. Yeah. Clemson, Alabama would, and then maybe the Pac-12 would be left out. But on the other hand, if let's say it TCU's the one team with one loss. And it's the same USC, Ohio State, or Michigan, you know, Alabama, and Clemson. Then I feel like it's TCU on the outside looking in because they don't have as much notoriety. They haven't been as good for as long. You know, TCU's only been in the Big 12 for, I, I don't even think it's been 10 years, which I know yeah. is so, you know, shouldn't matter, but it does. Yeah. The, it, it does when it's what, only four teams in the college football play. Well, and what you got to look at is if you're a college football fan, you got to look at who's on that committee, right? Right. Those people on that committee are people who have much, much more years watching college football than you or I do, Seth. You know, yeah. combined, you know, they're all they're all com- older than us combined in age. You know, yeah. So that's that's one of those things where they definitely have certain opinions about certain they teams. Ha- they can, that they, yeah, they're used to TCU playing Mountain West, and before then it was something else. Before then it was you know and. They're not used to T- TCU playing in the Big 12, you know, and that's the same th- if, like, if Colorado won the Pac-12. They're not used to Colorado being good, you yeah. know, if, um, what if, oh, gosh, I can't even think of an ACC team right now off the top of my head, but I, I don't know if, um, yeah, if, if North Carolina, you know, North Carolina's not good at football, Duke's not good at football, you know, it'd be <laughs> weird, right? They wouldn't get the yeah. same recognition if, um, you know, friendly Mississippi State, you know, or even Arkansas this year. Whatever they're not known for being just great at football all the time, like in recent memory, right? Right. And so it'd be one of those. Well, how are we going to put those guys in? You know. Right. But then again, if like Georgia, Georgia, I could see being in over TCU, you know. Yeah. 
and I th- I hope that answers your question a little bit. I know it took a while to get no, there, right. but I hope that provides. But that's what goes through my mind is when it's you know when you have teams out there who are like, man, I really hope you know if TC wins out, they won't be left out. But they right. if they have one loss and it comes against somebody besides OU or OSU and they only have that one loss and they win the Big Twelve Championship, I'm real worried. Yeah. If they have that one loss it's to OU or OSU and they beat them in the Big Twelve Championship, I'm not as worried as TCU mm-hmm. fan, but I'm still worried because you have that one loss and you're still TCU. That's how I feel as an OSU fan. Right. No, I, I get you, and it's 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 weird talking about this, and I kind of feel weird about asking that question. I mean, we got so much football left to play this season. Um, I mean, it's – I don't see Alabama losing. I'd love to say they could lose a game this season because um, it would make me happy. But um, I don't see them losing. But, I mean, it's plenty of football to be played for all of those big um, winning teams. And so it's uh, – I would like to have this conversation again, say, in like four or five weeks once we start approaching the end of the season after um, – of course, after we face off, after we play Texas, after you all play Texas, and uh, kind of just seeing how we feel about it then. Um, again, I don't know what kind of wizardry goes into deciding that college football playoff. It's always been weird since they've started doing it. But um, I'm still overall, I'm still excited for this season. I'm still excited for uh, Baker Mayfield to keep doing him. I'm excited for Mason Rudolph to um, definitely step it up next week um, against Tech. Uh, I think it'll be a big shootout game. Usually is against Tex- Texas Tech. I remember oh, you playing them last year, and it was like 50 50- Something to fifty something. I mean, it was ridiculous. Uh, yeah, it was, I think wasn't OU a whole lot of defense played that game. No, not at all. <laughs> that's kind of what I'm uh, expecting about this OSU game. You know, that OSU uh, defense. Be. That OSU defense didn't really show up in this game against TCU at all. You know, they allowed. I mean, they allowed. You know, you allowed 44 points in the Big 12. It should not automatically mean a loss, but it really did yesterday. You know, yeah. uh, OSU team only scored 31, and that's how I think this end of this. That's how I think this weekend's going to go. OSU. Texas Tech. I mean, if I could afford a plane ticket, I'd try to go down there. You yeah. know, I think it's gonna be a great game. It's gonna be a see shootout, that, but it will be, yeah, it will be right. a shootout for sure. And it'll be entertaining. So I, I'm excited. Um, I know Mason Rudolph's definitely gonna get uh, completely prepared for this game, um, especially after this week. Um, I think that definitely uh, lots of fire under anybody, um, especially losing the game that you and nobody else expects you to lose. Um, it's an upset game, so I, I understand that uh, it stinks for OSU fans. It stinks for, of course, um, all the guys on the field. But uh, I would be very surprised um, if OSU didn't show out against Texas Tech. So. Same, same here, same here. Um, you know, OU has bye week this week. Thunder don't play till the 19th of October. That's opening night for the Thunder, of course. NBA fans, opening night for the uh, NBA. His 17th, where you've got Cavs Celtics matchup, which will be crazy <laughs> uh, with that <laughs> well, trade I'm over the summer. That. <laughs> That'll be fun. Um, thank you again to uh, Jacob Ingalls for donating this equipment to the podcasting thing. We are still trying to figure out how all this stuff works, though. <laughs> so the uh, quality will only keep going up here with the mobile studio. There we go. Um, only keep increasing. Uh, right now, we had to run out and try to find some uh, makeshift microphones with the cables because Best Buy was closed. But um, we're doing what we can. And I'm Glenn. I'm Seth. Uh, we will catch you. You want what's your uh, what's your Twitter handle for all those followers you want to gain? Know. You don't know? <laughs> I really use Twitter, man. <laughs> um, uh, I think it's Mister underscore Fulla F U L L A. Okay, Mine's, I think. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I've been trying to get back into it, but I mostly just read stuff. Yeah, no, it's all uh, good. That's <laughs> what I, I mean. That's, that's most that's most people, but. If you want to go get Seth to follow, and you're an OU, OU fan who listens to this podcast, yeah. go Mr. follow over there. F-U-L-L-A. Yeah, and uh, I'm G- <laughs> I'm at GC Bedlam Brother on Twitter. We will catch you guys soon, and try to keep the podcast rolling along here at least once a week. I know we've had some issues with that recently with Bedlam Brother, with me going to school, Calvin telling me that I got to take over the editing and everything like that, because he went back to school, and he's over this, I guess. Um... Sam and Walter both, you know, live in Oklahoma City, uh, both having full time jobs, working, you know, forty plus hours a week. And then Walter just Walter got married I, I mean it's not even it's maybe been six months now, right? Just in February. Yeah. No. It's March or April. March. March or April, something like that. March or yeah. April. It's maybe it's April. 
It was in March. By the way, he's married now. So that's, that's the moral now. of the story. So it <laughs> takes that's, that's more time out of his day he didn't right. think he'd have. And uh, Sam's still um, helping children in Africa build homes or something. I forget what I we know. keep saying about Sam. but uh, yeah, He's wearing jerseys and stuff. It's he, okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I like that. Um, well, that ends up the podcast for this one. And we will uh, catch you guys soon. Make sure to follow us at, on Twitter at Bethlehem Brother and like the Facebook page. Bethlehem Brother, Facebook.com forward slash Bethlehem Brother. And that's.